Greetings viewers and welcome to today's info sharing snippet. We will be covering the Sage Children Revolution Job Manager feature. Now, as the name implies, the Job Manager allows you to set up certain processes and schedule them to run at certain predefined times. Let's see exactly how this process unfolds. Now, under Common Maintenance, you'll find the Job Manager feature. And if I go in there, you'll see that there are a couple of options. Now, the Job Manager really is based on four platforms. The ability to run a general ledger relink, the ability to make a backup of your database, the ability to update a price update batch, as well as to run specified reports. So firstly, if I go to my Add Job option, you see that I've got the ability to specify which particular job type I need to run. So let's just start, for example, with maybe a relink. And if I say OK, then you'll see that I can now specify a name for my relink. So I'm going to say, for example, GL Relink, and I've got my details there. And if I see on the left hand side, you see that I've got my GL Relink option. And if I click on that option, it tells me that I can now go and schedule my specific Relink. So I've got my job name there. I'm going to enable it, and I can start and actually specify a time to schedule the GL Relink. Under my scheduler, I can specify if this task must be done daily, weekly, monthly, or a once-off option. So, for example, I'm going to make it a weekly feature, a weekly relink. And then I can certainly specify a start time for this process. So, because it's a relink, I'm going to say, for example, maybe 7 p.m., um, obviously a time when no one's in the system, no processing is happening. It's so really quite important that these particular processes need to be scheduled at a time when there's no processing. So, for example, 7 p.m. could be when the business is closed and the relink can then run. I then specify a specific number of weeks and the days of the week when this should be happening. So, for example, I can say maybe Wednesday and I can go next. It then gives me details about the schedule and the next run for this particular process. And I can finish, and I've now scheduled my GL Relink. Now, if I go to the General Ledger Relink option, you'll see that I'm able to specify an output log for this particular process. So I need to firstly include this uh, Relink in my job run. And you'll see that the output is saved to a log file. So very importantly, for things like Relinks, you need to see perhaps there were some errors or in the process of running the relink, and I can simply then go to my log, and I can see the details or the process of the log of my GL relink. Back to relink properties, and if need be, I can email the details of the GL relink um, to certain respondents or, or recipients, and if it's multiple respondents or recipients, I can simply separate the email addresses with a semicolon. Alternatively, I can also, for example, send this, these details to certain agents who are using the application. Um, I can just use the select option, and I've then got details about all the agents in my Evolution database, and I can specify a certain agent to send this information to. So I'm going to make it the administrator, and I'm good to go. Right, so very quick and easy. I've now, under my GL Relink, I've got my schedule tells me when the next one's going to occur and details of the sequencing. And then over there, I've simply specified is that I'm going to be emailing certain individuals, in this case, agents with the application. And once that uh, relink has been completed, I can then go to the log file just to see the status of that relink. Right, so the next option we have is the ability to specify a backup. So if I go to my backup option, I'm now going to say, for example, give it the name as I did with the relink. Right. 
right. So you'll notice is that I've now got my database backup process there on the left hand side of the screen. And we're good to go. So this particular point, it's going to give me details of the default backup location. So there's my location where the backup file is going to be created. However, I could certainly go and change that and specify a different uh, backup output location. Once again, including the job run. And if need be, I can email the output to certain recipients. And once again, I'm going to specify that this process or this information would need to go through to administrator. And you'll see that I've got my log option there. So obviously once the process has been completed, we can then obviously see details of the log of this procedure. Under my database backup process, I'm now going to schedule it. So I'm going to enable it. And we can say, for example, daily, weekly, monthly, or one-time only backup. And just continue with that process. And once again, very importantly to schedule this process at a time when there's no processing happening within the database. So I've got my details there and I can complete this task information every day, weekdays, every so many days, etc. Right, so just tells me details of the next run to happen and the time until the next run is going to occur on this particular schedule. Right, so we've got our database or backup is going to occur to that folder and we set up our schedule. Our third option that we have is the ability to run certain reports within the job manager. So I'm going to use report as my job type, and I'm now going to sort of give it a name. So just say, for example, I'm going to say customer age analysis. You just want to view the details of the aging at a certain period or a certain intervals. I've got my details there, and you'll see that I've, it appears on the left-hand side of the screen. So now I'm going to simply go to the option that says Add, and add a report. Now, what we have here is the whole range of reports that we can schedule. So, for example, in my case, I'm going to make use of the customer age analysis, and gives me details A or age analysis. But now if you go a bit further, you'll see that there's a whole range of reports, for example, from details about your fixed assets, um, asset information, details about, for example, if you are using the point of sale modules, you can, for example, should report, for example, things like cashier sales. Um, once again, contact management, things like, for example, um, your number of incident escalations, there we go, we've got the instant escalations there. Um, as I mentioned, if you're using the point of sale modules, things like your day end report for point of sale. Um, and if you go a bit further down, you see we've got details about your lay buys on in point of sale, things like your keeper side transactions, etc. cetera, um, manufacturing processes. And also very useful, you've got details about, for example, your sales. So you may want to check your sales figures for a certain period on a daily basis, et cetera. Simply just specify that you want to run or schedule a sales analysis report um, for your particular information. So I'm going to, in this example, I'm going to be using the customer aging. So I'm going to use that option. There we go, AR age analysis. And what you notice is that We've now got the ability to specify a report name, as we've done previously, but also we can specify an output or location where to save our files. So I'm going to say save output to a certain file, and I can then simply go specify location to save this report to. And then I can also specify file format. So from Excel formats, for example, to PDF to text file, I've got a whole range of options available there. And if need be, I can just print the output as well. And as previously seen, we can also email the output to certain individuals uh, or multiple recipients. And also, once again, we can then also specify an agent uh, from within our evolution database. Now, a very really useful feature we have uh, with regards to reports is the ability to append 
the date and the time of the report to the report name. So very useful perhaps if you're running, uh, for example, value reports, you may have multiple reports in a specified, in a specified location and very easy to identify the time the report was run if you use the append date and time option to that report. So we've got our details there, it's in the job run, I specified my output location, I specified um, the file format, we'll just make this PDF, and I'm going to email certain recipients, etc. in this particular case, an agent within the database. Right, so I've got my information there, I'm gonna go back to my scheduler, and once again, the same process, I'm going to make this, for example, perhaps a weekly occurrence. And let's just say, for example, as time where after the close of business, and we can specify those details there, it tells me when the next run is going to occur, and I can complete the process. So currently, we set up a general ledger relink. We set up a schedule for our backup of our database and also the ability we scheduled a customer aging to occur at our specified details. Now, the other option we do have is the ability to use a price update batch. So I'm just going to, at this particular instance, just close the job manager, and we're gonna see changes. And in order to see the process of a price update batch, I'm going to go to my inventory module under transactions, we've got the option to schedule a price update batch. Now, a price update batch um, just allows you to update a certain range of item selling prices at a specific time per specific warehouse. The first step would then be to go create a new batch. And what you see there is that we've got the ability to mark it as a batch scheduling feature. So I'm going to mark batch scheduling. And then once again, we can specify information about the update type, uh, the price list to be affected, and we can specify our range of inventory items. So I'm simply going to just specify for um, pricing for one specific warehouse. And then I'm just going to specify a short range of stock items. Right, there we go. So it's these range of items, it's gonna be scheduled and I'm going to use it from the master warehouse. So, right, there we go. Right, so now a batch is gonna be generated with the filter options that I've specified. Remember is that you can generate the batch at a certain time and then when required, simply go and input the prices. So in this instance, I'm going to, for example, make specify my update pricing. Um, um, and then we can just save the batch and validate it before we continue. Right, so I specified my new pricing and now I'm just going to validate the batch. Okay, no errors. Validation was successful. So we're going to save it. And what you notice is now I've got a price update batch numbering sequence for me. And I'm going to close this feature. Now it's a case of reverting back to my job manager and I'm going to create a to update my selling prices based on my price update batch. Job manager and I'm going to add a job, specify the batch option and we're going to give it a name just for example um, Okay, so there we go, price update batches. Right, so once again, at this particular point, I can specify my email recipients and I can also specify the agents. Right, so there we go. Now, very important, you'll see that I can now specify a price update batch. So on my drop down, I'm then going to specify that particular batch got my details there, and now it's a case of going back to my scheduler, enable it, and in this particular instance, it could be, for example, 
a one-time only event. So I'm going to use that option. Next, and I'm just going to specify time frame when this uh, process is going to occur. And I can say next. So, and then I can finish. Right, so I've got my price update batch is going to occur at a certain point in time. Remember that was that this particular instance was a once off event. So it tells me that this is when it's going to be occurring. And I've got my details there. So as you can see, with regards to the job manager, four options available, the ability to generate or schedule a report to be run from a range of reports, the ability to process or run a general ledger relink, a database backup, or in fact, schedule a price update batch. Now, very importantly, once again, just to reiterate that these particular processes should really be scheduled to occur um, after hours when there's no processing taking place in the database. So obviously just ensure that you specified the relevant time information when setting up a scheduler for these particular processes. So as you can see, the job manager really is a very useful feature which allows you to schedule certain events within your database. And then very importantly, being able to send information or email information to relevant individuals within your organization, your agents, or, and specify the email addresses, and also the ability once a process has been completed, you are able to view details of that procedure simply by going to the log file. Right, so thank you so much for watching. It's over and out for me, and goodbye.